Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters, friends and family, the world over. It's such a great and humbling opportunity that I have today to come to you to share the truth of the Creator's name. Did you know that our Creator has a proper name, that He has asked us to call on His name, that He revealed His name to His servant Moses in the Hebrew scrolls? All the monotheistic religions of the world claim to believe the Hebrew scrolls, yet none of them use this proper name as a whole. The scriptures tell us in the Hebrew text that the Creator is expanding the heavens, that He hangs the earth upon nothing, that it is a round sphere, and that all the heavens declare the glory of His name. So what is His name? Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to witness the greatest cover-up of all of human history, and it's a great opportunity in these last days to reveal the truth of His name. I call this teaching, Restoring the Creator's Name, this is Hashem Revealed. In his writings of wisdom, King Shlomo, or King Solomon, in the book of Proverbs, says in the 30th chapter, perhaps one of the greatest questions has ever been put to all of mankind. He says, starting with verse 4, Who has ascended up into heaven, or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who has bound the water in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name, and what is his son's name? if you can tell. These are in the ancient Hebrew scriptures and what we called the Old Testament or the Tanakh. We see that the son's name and the father's name are attached throughout all the scriptures to salvation, to blessing, and to hope of salvation in the latter days. And we're going to look at a specific prophecy. We're going to use the King James Version of the Bible. We're going to look at Joel chapter 2 and we're going to start with verse 30. Starting at verse 30, we read, This is a specific prophecy concerning the last days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord, as it says, comes. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Again, this says, whosoever shall call on his name shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. This particular verse tells us that if we call on his name, we will be delivered, we will be saved. We need to understand what is his name, but first let's understand what the word to call on his name means. The word call in the Hebrew, according to the Strong's, it is, Hebrews, um, is the Hebrew number 7121 in the Strong's Concordance. It is kara, and it means to call, to call out, to recite, to proclaim, to read, to cry out, to summon, to preach His name. This is what it is saying. It's saying we must cry it out. We must cry it aloud. We must speak it out. We must read it out. We must recite it. We must summon his name in the latter days and be preaching his, his name in the latter days to be counted worthy to be a part of the remnant who will be saved. So, the first thing I want you to understand in unveiling the Creator's name, that every time you see Lord or God in all capital letters in your Hebrew, in your uh, in your King James uh, version of the Bible, what you would have is what the scholars call the Tetragrammaton, which is the four letters in Hebrew of the Father's name. And they appear on the screen from right to left in the Paleo Hebrew, Yod, He, Wa, He. Again, these letters are Yod, He, Wa, He. And many times you will find references in your English versions of the Bible, perhaps by Lord or God in all capital letters, with a little margin number. If you go and look into the margin, you will see the letters Y-H-W-H. -H. 
these are to represent these four Hebrew letters. So the Father has left a great record in the scriptures of his name. So we're going to begin to break down this and break down his name. However, many people say that his name does not matter. That we can call him Lord, we can call him God, these are fine, these names will save us. However, the Hebrew scrolls and the prophet Joel do not say this. It says, Whosoever shall call on yod Hey wah Hey, that name, and reads it aloud and preaches it aloud, they will be saved in the latter days. So, first we need to understand how did yod Hey wah Hey, the great creator's name, get covered up in the scriptures? Did the Father know that this would happen? Well, of course he did. He is sovereign. He sits on the throne and he knows all things. There's nothing that is hidden from him. He spoke of the people profaning his name even in the days of the prophets. I want you to turn in your scriptures to Hosea chapter 2, starting with verse 16. Hosea chapter 2, starting with verse 16. This is a prophecy for the restoration of the Father's people. And it says in verse 16, It shall be. In that day, saith the Lord, as it says in the King James once again, with yod heh wah he, that thou shalt call me Ishi, which means husband, and thou shalt no longer call me Baali, for I will take away the names of the Baalim out of her mouth, and they will no longer be remembered by their name. So we see that his people had begun to call him Baali. If we look up the word Baal, in the Strong's Concordance, it is Hebrews number 1168. I want everyone to look into their Strong's Concordance and see this for themselves. The word Baal means Lord. This is the interpretation that the Strong's gives to us that Baal means Lord. So, we see that the Father knew that the people were calling him Lord or Baal. And what we have here is evidence that not only were they calling him that, but a conspiracy must have went on to keep his name out of the English scriptures and to give us Baal, to give us Lord. So, we need to examine this very closely. We're going to go to Jeremiah, Yeremi Yahu, that's his name in Hebrew, Yeremi Yahu, remember that. We're going to go to chapter 12, and we're going to start with verse 16, but before I begin to read, I want to open up a few things concerning Yermiyahu. Yermiyahu's scroll is all about Yisrael and the children of Yisrael, all the 12 tribes, as they were being besieged by Babylon and brought into the Babylonian captivity. Now, interesting things took place during this time, but what I want to see is, Jeremiah, Yeremiah, is speaking in chapter 12, verse 16, during this occupation of the land and during the, the time of the captivity, and he speaks in verse 16 in the narration of the Father, as the Father is speaking through him, and it says, And it shall come to pass, if they will diligently learn the ways of my people to swear by my name. And it says in King James, The Lord lives... But if you actually look it up, even, even here, it's got, it shows where his name appeared. So we know that his name appeared, that he wants them to swear by his name. He says, if you will learn the ways of my people to swear by my name, as they taught my people to swear by Baal, then you shall be built in the midst of my people. But if they will not obey, if they will not tell the people to swear by his name, then he says, I will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation. And again, it says, says the Lord in the, in the King James Version of the Bible, we know that his name appears there. So, we see that before the Babylonian captivity, Jeremiah was telling the people, stop swearing by the Lord. Stop swearing by Baal and swear by his name that he lives. That he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That his name does not change. It was written by his finger and given directly to Moses. It was confirmed by all the prophets and used by the Messiah. And he is saying, do not call me Baal. And Hosea says that he will take away the word Baal, the word Lord, from your lips forever. It will never be remembered. 
And in, again, in Joel chapter 2, we are told, in the latter days, we must call on his name.